wait is finally over and we're back at Santa Pod Raceway's fast show for round one of the 2015 Competition Clutch Front Wheel Drive Drag Series. The fast shows, the first of the big modified and performance shows of the year here at Santa Pod with huge crowds here to see the action. For 2015 we've got some exciting new faces, plenty of last year's contenders plus the promise of more than a few old favourites returning to the class. The format's the same as always, three scheduled qualifying passes in the morning leading into eliminations in the afternoon. And as the first drivers prepare for the qualifying session one, all eyes will be on the newly painted Tigra of Sam and Jay, winners of the series in 2014. We caught up with Sam Bolton during Saturday's test session. Uh, we've changed quite a few things on the car, we've given it a new look. Uh, and we've had some good companies come on board. We've got Precision, Competition Clutch, uh, Safino Cabias, and uh, FCP Engineering. A gearbox was a worry point, but obviously we've got we've got a great team on board with the gearbox now, and hopefully we should be we should be okay. Last year obviously was down to breakages, really inconsistency. This year it's a competitive field, and uh, we're not up there with them yet. Uh, plan for now at the minute, we've we've had to rush to get here, so it's just testing tomorrow for us, uh, and then we'll see what happens later on in the year. A bit of data, a bit of testing, and, and we'll go from there for the next round. And a welcome return for Glenn Robson after an unlucky debut in 2014. Yeah, we've done a full new engine, new turbo, new colour scheme, everything really. Thanks to all my sponsors for helping me out. ASH, A5 Parts, Turbo Centre, IPG and many more. I can't really fit them all in, but thanks to them all for helping me out. Uh, getting the car back out, ready for the start of the season really. Well, we've managed to gain an extra 150 horsepower from the last engine, we learned some lessons, uh, we're getting there, we should be alright this season, hopefully we'll be nice and reliable. When Richard finally gets out, uh, we'll Guy Chamberlain extremely fast, hopefully Keel's back out this year as well, so uh, it's not always fastest that wins though is it? And a very eagerly awaited return to the series for CPL's Guy Chamberlain. Things are going really well uh, and the plan is to race the whole season. Uh, we've done a lot of testing over the last couple of years as you know. Uh, we're happy with everything we've done and uh, now we've got the time available to us to actually compete for the whole year. Some interesting competition this year as well with Richard. How are you seeing the season going? Fantastic. Uh, Richard's a great competitor, really good. Uh, you also got Kiel coming along who I expect to do really good things. Uh, a few others as well, you know, bringing out cars that are really coming up to a good standard and, and going to be good competition. So qualifying session one and alongside Sam Bolton in the Tigra will be another new car, the 1.6 litre Civic EK of Paul Atkinson. Now Sam told us in the interview that he's only doing checkout passes and staging for points today, so don't expect too much from him. But what about Paul Atkinson? Well he's off the line nicely and he's looking very good here. Don't forget this is a totally new car and again he's going to be looking to build up performance gradually over the next few runs and events. But that's a nice opening run. Glenn Robson in the right lane and that's Lee Ross in the left lane. Lee's actual race car isn't ready yet, so he's entered in his backup car to get staging points. But that's a flyer from Glenn. Yes, he crosses the line with a 9.66 at 157 miles per hour. And for the record, a 16.1 for Lee. And now we're on board with Amy Bradley. Peter Cole right lane, Amy Bradley left lane. Peter had a lot of niggling problems last year. Can he get things sorted for 2015? Amy's kept consistently chipping away at her times and she does it again with another personal best of 10.32 seconds. Qualifying session two and the first outing for Guy Chamberlain, but is he after championship points or just fast times? Uh, I mean, the faster times come naturally with development. We're not really specifically aiming to do a certain time, but obviously if you're quick, then you're going to qualify good and also you're going you're to do well in racing. And not only has the car been quick, it's consistently quick and it's relatively reliable as well, considering what it is. 
And we're definitely going to see records fall this season. Now remember that qualifying sets the field in two ways. With only eight spots on the race ladder, only the fastest eight get through into eliminations. But also it sets who races who in the first round, with quickest qualifier facing the slowest. So it's well worth trying to get that number one spot. First out is another backup street car, the blue VW of Richard Batty. Yeah, we've made quite a few changes to the car, completely new engine, uh, charge cooler setup, uh, full tubular front end on it. There's a lot of changes happening, uh, brand new ECU, new injectors, job lot, everything's changed, so it'll be almost a new car. Yeah, we'll be out either next round or the round after, and it'll be uh, good to race some of the new nine second guys and, and some of the old eight second guys. <laughs> So Richard in the left lane and Sam Bolton in the right lane. Now Sam's not looking for quick time today, but don't forget that last year he was very consistent as a competitor. And he'll certainly be wanting to run in the nines this year as he crosses the line 11.18, 113 miles an hour. Next up is the ever-improving Amy Bradley. At the end of October, I took it to Future Motorsport for a new map. Um, we got a little bit more power out of it from last year. Um, and apart from that, really, I've just had new slicks put on it. So, yeah, I'm really happy. <laughs> to be honest, it's taken three years now to get the car actually running correctly. So, to be honest, I'm just absolutely over the moon that I'm just doing consistent tens. Um, and I'm not really going to plan to do any more changes, maybe a little bit of tweaking uh, with Future Motorsport. Um, but at the minute, I'm just over the moon that it's running right. <laughs> and her launches certainly seem quicker this year. She heads up the line already at half track there, leaving her competitor there in her wake. And she nets another personal best with this run 10.30 seconds at 136 miles per hour. On board again with Amy Brand. Always been into cars, really. Um, always been into run what you brungs, and it just grew from there. And decided to build this one. It's 1.6 B series, uh, low boost at the minute, 400 horsepower. Um, hoping to go over seven, eight hundred by the end of the, the year, maybe, maybe next round. Yeah, it's running alright. Just the synchros in the gearbox can't cope with the nine and a half grand rev limiter. So hopefully, I might have to lower that, or just I'm going to try and get a new gearbox and better synchros, maybe. So it's Paul in the left lane, and he's taking on Peter Cole in the right lane. Peter's in the two-litre Thatcham Renault 5 GT Turbo, and while not the fastest in the field, he's certainly got the Renault record for the UK. 11.32 for Paul, and a 12.64 for Peter. Okay. Here's the eight second capable Honda Civic of Guy Chamberlain. Over the last few years, Guy's held on and off the front wheel drive record for the UK and Europe as well. With Richard Batty chasing hard, he'll want to do well this year. And at 10.87, it's a start, but certainly not representative of what that car will be doing once set up. And nowhere near Glenn Robson's current 9.66 number one spot. into session three and continuing improvement here from Paul Atkinson in the right lane up against Lee Ross. He's so close to that 10 second time as he goes over the line. 11.03. And a final attempt from Guy Chamberlain. Certainly looking better this time round. Heading up to the line is looking good and crossing the line in a 9.89 puts him number two spot as we go into the lunch break. So it's still Glenn Robson at number one with a 9.66. Guy Chamberlain second on a 9.89. And Amy Bradley in a well-deserved third place. The car's going well, you know, we can obviously make improvements. So yeah, we'll see how finals go. Do you change the setup at all from qualifying to racing or do you pretty much stick the same? Yeah, uh, we do, yeah. We're, we're, we've got a lot of technical stuff where, you know, boost per gear and stuff like that and wheel speed from versus rear and stuff like that, yeah, so we've changed quite a bit, really. So, as we move into round one of eliminations, here's the first round matchups. 
and with Glenn and Guy on opposite sides of the ladder, the form book says they should meet in the final. But drag racing's notoriously unpredictable. First pairing is number seven qualifier Lee Ross against number two qualifier Guy Chamberlain. With Guy nearest to us. Heading up to the line then. Getting ready. Heart in their mouths as they start the first eliminations of the first ever weekend for 2015. Off the line they go. Guy is off like a rocket flying down there. And it was a predictable victory for him as he crosses the line. And a 9.73, 139 miles an hour improves on the previous time, but still nowhere near that car's potential. Lee Ross crossing in a 15.97. So we have Glenn Robson up against Richard Batty in his road car just there. Richard rolling along the line, but he's left completely in the wake there of Glenn Robson as we expected. It would have been a huge surprise if Richard had beaten him. Glenn Robson crosses in 11.19, 110 miles an hour. Richard Batty crossing eventually in a 17.27 number 8 qualifier in his backup car. Well Sam Bolton's a no-show with problems after qualifying so Paul Atkinson all he has to do is drive up the line there. Just cut the beam and he's still going for it though. He's decided he's going to put down the time and he does indeed. Crossing in 11.49, 130 miles an hour. And Bradley here in the near side car. The Honda Civic in the far side is Peter Cole. Money would say it's Amy that's going to cross the line first. But let's see what happens. Well, she's cut the beam very, very well, and uh, she's left Peter Cole for dead there, off the line. She is getting so consistent with her starts. Down to the end, crossing in a 10.3 at 136 miles an hour. Peter Cole and a 14.16 at 117 miles an hour. Nicely done. So as the four remaining drivers ready their cars for round two, the semi-finals, we've just got time to take a quick look around the fast show here at Santa Pod. Yeah, it's going good. Uh, didn't expect to be in the semi-final, but I'm here. Uh, just going to keep it at two bars and see what it can do. So, first pairing will be Paul in the left lane, facing Glenn Robson in the right lane. Okay, then, it is time to run the semi-final, basically, this morning. See what these guys actually do. Now, Glenn really should have this one down pretty easily here. As they head off, nice start there. Struggling to get traction, it looked like. Off he goes, a great lead already for Glenn. He's slowing down though, he's slowing down, but he still makes it across the line. Not that much in it, 10.40, 106 miles an hour. With Paul Atkinson, a 10.9, 132. Amy Bradley up against Guy Chamberlain, surely the favorite from these two. Amy Bradley, very consistent. Guy Chamberlain with a season off, pretty much. He's back onto it, though. A bit of a squirm off the line. And he has left her for dead again, flying down the line. Amy is just looking at the back of that car, trying all she can. But no, Guy Chamberlain crosses the line. 9.54, 141 miles an hour. He's still improving. Amy Bradley at 10.33, 139 miles an hour. So the stage is set for the final and it's not all plain sailing in the pits for two drivers with both having mechanical issues. Although we're racing well and, and we're doing our job well, the car's only running on three cylinders. So. Any ideas why? Can you solve it for the final? Uh, definitely not. Uh, we've narrowed it down to either an injector or a coil 
Uh, we haven't got either here, so we'll just have to run it on three and see how we go. Yeah, I'm delighted with engine. Engine's absolutely 100%. We've just got another little issue at minute, but if there's any sponsors out there, I could do with a dog set, you know, for my gearbox, but if you don't actually don't get, but yeah, no, uh, we've got a problem with gearbox. Yeah, they're very extremely close to the edge, but I think Guy's got the upper hand, even. Uh, I've lost two gears out of four, so we're not going to do that well in final, but we will stage and we will break beam at the far end. So. It's final time and at last round 9.54 gives Guy lane choice, so he elects for his favourite right hand lane. And don't forget that neither driver knows for sure what the other's problems or game plan might be, though with Glenn only having those two gears the race really should be guys from start to finish. Oh, Guy has gone before the green light, so a red light disqualification. He's given the win to Glenn. A guy doesn't normally make mistakes like that. Was it a mechanical problem that pulled the car through the beams? Who knows? So Glenn cruises for the first event win of the series and the early season points lead. Congratulations, well done. No, we're a confusing day. We both had faults going into the final. Uh, I just come out on top, luckily. But you were number one qualifier. You made it through to the final. You took out the number two in the final, even though you had two gears. Uh, plenty of work to be done before the next round. No, not too much. Uh, new gears for the time being, and hopefully, you know, we'll get a dog box sorted out, and we should be all right for that. Well, congratulations on the win. Fantastic result. So, round two, not that far away. Time for these guys to get themselves sorted out, and we'll see some more brilliant runs coming up in the next round of the series.